Hello, welcome. It's Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy and the YouTube channel English Speaking Success. Today, I've got a very exciting video for you. It's a bit different from other videos. Let me explain. Recently, I did a video talking all about, does this work? Learning vocabulary with stories. And I use stories a lot in my online courses and it's a great way to improve your English and build your vocabulary. In addition, very recently, right, in fact, yesterday, I did this, a live lesson on pollution. Um, and if you haven't seen that, well, you can go and check it out. You can also go and get the PDF over there in the, um, well, the Keith Speaking Academy, right? It's over there if you haven't got it yet. Um, just check out the KeithSpeakingAcademy.com. Now then, I'm going to put all of those together. And today I've created a story about pollution. So you can review the vocabulary that you've seen. And if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. All about this topic to build your confidence, to be a confident speaker, talking about pollution. Okay, great. It's something a bit different, but let's see how it goes. Okay, here we go. This is a story. It's called The Poisonous Bay. The Battle for Newtonville. The Poisonous Veil. A veil is something you wear across your face, hiding something. Um, the Baton for Newtonville. La Ville is the French for city or town. So a lot of towns or some towns in England and America are called Ville, Newtonville. So it's the Battle for Newtonville. Let's find out what happens in the story. At the heart, by the way, <laughs> as I go through the story, um, what I'm going to do at the same time as tell the story is I will explain any words that may not, may not make sense. Okay, let's begin. At the heart of the bustling city of Newtonville, a crisis was brewing. Brewing is when you make alcohol, like wine or beer. Um, we talk about a crisis building up, right? The crisis was brewing, invisible to most of the city's inhabitants. A dangerous cocktail, <laughs> a cocktail is a mix of different liquids for a drink, right? So a dangerous mix or a dangerous cocktail of environmental pollution was taking hold from air pollution and water pollution to soil and noise contamination. <clears throat> the main guilty party, believe it or not, was the city's unregulated industrial plants. Now, plants, I don't mean like um, <clears throat> plants in the ground, like a growing, not like the strawberry plant. I mean the factory, right? Industrial factories or plants. Day and night, their chimneys belched out clouds of pollutants. To belch is almost to vomit. So they're vomiting out the clouds of pollutants, something toxic and horrible, enveloping the city in smog. Chemicals, including sulfur dioxide, mercury and lead, filled the air, creating a thick layer of invisible poison. The residents, unaware, inhaled this deadly mixture daily. Can you imagine if you're breathing in or inhaling this horrible mixture, this smog of chemicals? What's going to happen? Not good. The waterways weren't spared either. Factories dumped their waste, including harmful plastics, directly into the rivers, polluting the once clear and lively water bodies. A water body, just a name for an area of water, like a lake or a river or a, a sea, are water bodies. Water pollution led to contamination of the food chain, resulting in a rise in infant mortality rates. Mortality is death, basically. It's Doom and gloom, it's not very good for the people of uh, Newtonville, and it gets worse. <clears throat> the soil too, the soil, the land, the dirt was suffering. The debris, 
Now, if you saw the live lesson yesterday, you'll know all these words, or you will have seen all these synonyms for rubbish, waste, garbage, debris, right? The debris from these industries filled with harmful chemicals was discarded psh, haphazardly, thrown away randomly without care, um, causing the once fertile land to become unsuitable for farming. And this triggered a drop in local produce, increasing the dependency on imports. So the local produce are all the, the fresh fruit and vegetables that pr are produced by the people of Newtonville. Noise pollution, my God, it gets worse. <laughs> Noise pollution was another distressing aspect. The constant hum of the factories. Hum, hum. The traffic noise and other sources created a cacophony that disrupted the city's peaceful ambiance. Cacophony is lots of different conflicting noises coming together. It even led to chronic health problems in the city's inhabitants, right, the residents, particularly those living near the industrial areas. So what's causing all of this? Well, the city council, however, turned a blind eye to these issues, attributing them to industrial progress and economic prosperity. Hmm. The growing health concerns were just the tip of the iceberg. The real problems lay beneath the surface, ignored and untreated. Wow. So what's going to happen? It's a bit of a dilemma, right? This city. Well, let's find out what happened. Joe, David and Rose had been living in Newtonville for years. They were childhood friends, bonded by shared experiences and a shared love for their city. As they grew older, they couldn't ignore the problems their city was facing. Rampant pollution. Rampant means running away without, under no control, right? Rampant pollution and a nonchalant city council. Nonchalant is like, huh, I don't care. Everything's okay. Don't worry about it. Non-caring, nonchalant. A nonchalant city council. Joe, David and Rose decided it was time to act. What did they do? Let's find out. Their first course of action was to raise awareness. They organised rallies. So rallies are like demonstrations in the street. Cleaned up littered streets and advocated for waste segregation and recycling. Nice. Their work sparked conversations around air pollution, plastic pollution and noise pollution. To spark a conversation is to provoke or create a conversation. People began to question the city councils in action, as they should, right? Their activities also attracted the attention of local media. A journalist, Anna, began covering their story regularly, bringing wider attention to their cause. Inspired, more citizens joined their efforts. Momentum was building. Great. However, their path was far from smooth. Newtonville's, Newtonville? Newtonville's powerful industrial lobby was displeased. They saw the friends as a threat, jeopardizing their profits. Jeopardize is to put at risk, right? Jeopardize, what a great word. Jeopardizing their profits. Why is it J-E-O? That makes no sense. Jeopardizing their profits. They began a smear campaign. So a smear campaign is when you try to discredit someone. You say bad things about them. Sounds very political, right? They began a smear campaign, discrediting the group, claiming they were alarmists, ah! who exaggerated the extent of pollution, spreading fake news across social media. This sounds very real. Is this a real story? 
could be. Simultaneously, the city council was under pressure. They issued a cease and desist order to the group. So this is a legal order where you tell somebody, listen, stop right now or we're going to sue you. They issued a cease and desist order to the group, accusing them of causing public disorder. Oh, sounds like the uh, kettle calling the, calling the pot black. Dejected, the friends wondered if their efforts were in vain. Right, In vain just means a waste of time. Sometimes studying English can feel like you're studying in vain. Right, Sometimes it feels like it's a waste of time, but it's not. Keep going, my friend. Dejected, friend, dejected, the friends wondered if their efforts were in vain. It felt like their fight was just a drop in the ocean, making little difference. And then what happened? At this moment, a shocking news report emerged. I love the music. Anna, remember Anna, the journalist, conducted an investigation into the city's health records, revealing a significant increase in respiratory problems. It's hard to say. Respiratory problems. Respiratory means breathing problems. And infant mortality rates, primarily in areas near the factories. Aha! This news triggered public outrage. What? Impossible. Disgusting. It was clear the health issues were not isolated incidents, but consequences of pollution. So, emboldened by public support, emboldened to make bold, right? Bold, not as in bold print, but bold as in brave, courageous. Emboldened by public support, the friends decided to fight back. They gathered evidence of the factories flouting pollution control norms. To flout a norm or a, or a rule is to break a rule. They were flouting. <laughs> what a great word, flouting. Not floating, but flout, as in out, <whistles> out. Flouting the norms, leading to air, water and, social, and soil pollution. Social pollution? Soil pollution. Armed with this, they took their fights to the court, challenging the city council's cease and desist order. Now with the media on their side, maybe they have a chance. Let's find out. In a tense courtroom showdown, they presented their case passionately. Ooh. They argued that the city council was turning a blind eye to industrial pollution leading to dire health consequences. Dire, terrible, right? Serious. Dire health consequences and destruction of the environment. What's going to happen? Days turned into weeks as the city awaited the verdict with bated breath. <gasps> bated breath. That's my uh, impression of bated breath. <gasps> It's a bit like on tenterhooks, right? On edge. Finally, the judge ruled in favour of the friends, deeming their actions as necessary for the greater good. The courtroom erupted in applause. <laughs> wow! All three of them, not a busy courtroom. And the city council was directed to enact strict regulations on waste disposal and monitor industrial pollutants rigorously, right, strictly. The victory was sweet. Hooray! But the friends knew this was just the beginning of their fight for a cleaner Newtonville. Where am I? Here we am. In the face of adversity, they stood tall, embodying the Native American proverb, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. Interesting. They had taken the first steps towards repaying their debt, settling Newtonville on a path towards healing and recovery. 
the poison veil. The poison veil, right, was starting to lift. And that, my friends, is the end of the story. Great. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Listen, this was just a very, very simple way for me to review the vocabulary from pollution to use stories to make it interesting and engaging and for you to enjoy, well, this morning or this afternoon, depending where you are watching this video. If you like this, then please do subscribe turn on notifications, and do leave me a comment. Um, let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the story, I can do some more for the live lessons. In the meantime, have a great rest of the day. Um, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.